Today I want to talk about a less known feature in JavaScript that has existed ever since the creation of JavaScript itself. And that feature is called the arguments variable. To get to it, we first need to define a simple function. So I'm going to say here function test that's going to take in a parameter, let's say n1, and I'm simply going to log this parameter. And I'm also going to call this function with, let's say, 1 as the value. If I try to run this, well, what do you know? You get 1 in the console. Now, what, what if I want a list of all the arguments? Well, we can actually get that by simply typing in arguments instead of n1. So if I say here arguments and try to run this, you'll notice that we get an arguments object that has the property 0 and the value 1. And that value is the value of the argument passed by us. If I change this to 3, for example, we're going to get 3 in its place, right? So that's a way to get well, not only just the first argument, but all of the arguments. Just like so if I try to say n2, for example, here, and just pass in another argument, you'll notice that we get now two arguments. Now, the really interesting thing here is that you can actually pass multiple arguments here. For example, let's try and pass in a string here. And see, I'm going to just pass in a third parameter to the function, but not define it in the function signature itself. Even then, I can actually access that parameter, right, through this arguments function. If I, if you take a look at the list here, you get the third parameter with the index 2 has the param value. And if I just say arguments of 2 here, instead of just arguments, you'll notice that we get the param that was a third argument to a function that doesn't define a third argument. This is a really interesting thing about this argument function. It simply takes in whatever it was given to it at runtime, right? When it, wa when it was called. But G called vault, you say, we already have rest parameters. Why do we even need this thing? So you can just say, well, we can simply say here numbers. And if we try to print this thing, and simply say numbers in this case. You'll notice that we get a list of all parameters. And if I take the index out of this one, yeah, we get basically the same thing, except the second one is an argument object, but that's fine. The useful part about arguments is when it comes to using rest parameters with even other parameters in the same function, right? So if we have here numbers, as a rest parameter and have n1 and n2 as well, right? And I'm going to just add more numbers here instead, right? And if I try to print all the parameters in a console log like so, and also the arguments, so we see the comparison between the two, you'll notice once I clear the screen, you'll notice that we get an interesting result here. The first one has three and five as separate, as separate variables and numbers as a list or an array of parameters, right? But arguments actually stores that not as a list, but as individual arguments, because that's how they were passed at runtime, right? So you only get the values three, five, seven, eight, and nine. No distinction between three and seven and nine, right? As with these ones, there is. So that might come in useful if you want to not differentiate between rest parameters and just simple parameters themselves. But then again, you might also just use simple rest parameters, right? This is just a an old feature that has its niche uses, but you should usually not use it because it's just very unpredictable and by design, it's very hard to track down bugs if it ever comes down to that, right? One more thing I forgot to mention is that this arguments variable only applies to functions. If you use arrow functions, for example, so if I try to define here an arrow function, let's say const test equals that and that. And if I try to run this now, whoa, <laughs> we get a pretty big Pretty big, big result here, but what does that even mean?
Well, don't worry, it's not really something complicated that we've printed here. As you'll notice, it's the, sa it's the same arguments object, right? But now it has a lot of really funky stuff. And that's because I'm using node to run this. If I were to have a function here, so let's say an anony anonymous function, just like so, that also self calls itself. So let me just do the needed thing to have it self call and then say, for example, test and indent it properly. And let me do all this. You'll notice that we still, we get the arguments variable, but for which function? For the closest function that is defined, which is actually this one, right? So the argument function applies to the closest function. And for our, for when we got that ridiculous result back then, that was because I was running it in Node. And so I hope this was useful to you. I think this might come in handy when debugging and you want to quickly know how this, this current function that you're in was called, right? And you don't have to look at uh, the file. All right, so that's about it for this video. Thanks for watching and see you next time.